Alrighty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we've got another creator tutorial that goes over your recommended export settings for your video so that they do the mostest with the hostess when you put them onto the YouTube. So they remain suave, yet compressed, so you're not uploading extra information you may not need or want, but it also has the most quality before YouTube does that compression thingy where it murders your video quality, and it does it to all of them, unfortunately. And this tutorial comes as a recommendation from a viewer named Naveed, and he was just like, you know what, Larry, it would be splendid if you could talk about some of these confusing settings, because they are confusing and can take a lot of research sometimes in order to understand them. So right off of uh, the YouTube recommendations page, and I will link that page for your reference in the description so you could bookmark it, and YouTube recommends that, obviously, you upload your videos in the MP4 format, so that is the H.264 codec, is what it is called. And there'll be a nice black box jumped up on the screen right now to relay this information for you to write down if you need. And then the container, obviously, .mp4, whatever gives you the file output name, your delicious movie, .mp4. And then the audio codec you should be using is AAC, and then your resolution and frame rate should be as close to your source as possible. No cheating and upping 720 to 1080, ladies and gentlemen. That does not look good. It'll turn your video into poopy. Don't do it. It's bad. And then, of course, um, don't cheat on your frame rates. If you try to up from, like, 24 to 30, it's going to look choppy, and I'll explain why later. And so down here in your bit rates, YouTube recommends that your... Target bitrate for 720 be 5 megabytes per second, and your target bitrate for 1080p be 8 megabytes per second with an audio bitrate of 384. Now, audio bitrate isn't going to get you in trouble. It's not going to kick back any um, errors when you upload to YouTube. That's mostly just your video bitrate that it's paying attention to. So if you go a little lower than that to like 320 um, kilobytes per second or to 256, um, for your audio, that's perfect. It contains all your lovely vocal and game audio just fine. Um, a lot of your exports will limit it to 320. So if you have to go with that, just go with it. Don't don't worry about it in, a, in the slightest. Because we're not going to upload it to 5.1 surround sound because that would be kind of silly because 90% of people are not watching these videos on their smart TV in their living room with a fancy speaker setup. So with that out of the way... Um, I will show you how to export your video inside of Premiere Pro. You can do the same thing in Sony Vegas, Final Cut, Avid, whatever your video editor of choice is or that you happen to be using. However, I do recommend stepping up your game if you are using something like Windows Movie Maker or iMovie because, well, you can't do fancy things like edit in these fancy screenshots to be all cool and hand animated or modify your audio so it's all nice and balanced and you're Shooty noises aren't overriding your voice, and it's hard to hear you. And so, um, just select whatever clip you're looking to export. In this case, we'll select Destiny 11, so this is Fancy Golden Border, and we'll go to Export Media. And so, format, you want these to be H.264, that's the MP4 format. Um, most of your videos will probably be recorded that way, too. If it's something else to begin with, don't worry about it. These encoders are real smart. And they'll convert things like MOV and FLV right to MP4. And then you want, well, I guess you can use a preset if you want. Things like Premiere, they come with all of these handy video presets for like Vimeo or YouTube. And they work pretty well, but I have a note on the target bit rates so that you're safer when you upload your videos and you don't run into problems. So we'll just go up here, make sure our video, export video, and export audio are selected. We'll double check our name of our video and make sure that the file format is .mp4. That all looks splendid. We'll make sure that the aspect ratio is the same as our output that it is on our input or our source video. In my case, it's 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS. Larry, Larry, what's the deal here? You got 59.94 FPS and you're trying to export 60. Well, you can cheat a little. You can cheat a little and I'll explain how. If you have to, I've set this up to show you how in case you run into the uh, the same thing. So normally I record my videos at 60 FPS, but this video recorded 
at 59.94 FPS. Um, that's okay. I mean, it's not great. Usually you only want it at like 30 or whatever it started as, but if you're like 29 and you want to go to 30, you can do that and I'll explain how. So we'll explain how to go from 59 to 60 or 29 to 30 in a moment. So we want to make sure that our aspect ratio is whatever we're getting in. In my case, it's 1080p. If you're doing 720p, you can make it smaller, but never, ever, ever, ever make it bigger because that'll look poopy. And if you happen to have a weird aspect ratio because you're playing on a monitor that's a funny size because it fits better on your desk, I recommend downgrading it to 1920 or downgrading it to 1280, so that's a more regular aspect ratio. It's what people are conf are, co are comfortable with, and usually YouTube will dumb down like a 1600 by 900 video to 1280 by 720 anyway. So you're just saving yourself some time uploading. Then aspect ratio, just leave this at square pixels, or else you'll get these weird black bars on the side. TV standard... This doesn't matter overly much. NTSC is the American TV standard. PAL is the European. YouTube accepts both. This would only matter if you were trying to submit this for broadcasting on a local TV station. And then, of course, some um, profile. This is your overall quality. However, unless you're playing with a ridiculously high bitrate, you can just leave this on main. Level. This is sort of like the recommended um, file size to quality. Um, levels for 720, I recommend 4.0. For 1080, I recommend 4.2. Both of those will let you bump your video up to 60 FPS if you recorded at that, because YouTube now um, handles 60 FPS. Isn't that handy for uh, those of us in the PC Master Race? And no, we're not getting into that argument of frame rates. It's just there if you want it. Render at maximum depth. You can use this if you want. It basically allows the computer to get the most... Um, adequate and highest resolution colors per pixel density levels and all that. Just know that it can increase your um, quality slightly. It, it can slightly increase your rendering time too, but this isn't super important. But if you're a stingy guy and you like, uh, you like your video as fancy as possible, just give that a click. And then um, we'll collapse this and talk about bit rates. VBR one pass is the minimum you want for um, video quality. Bit rates basically mean that your computer can look at all of the um, individual frames that make up the video because each frame is an individual picture. They just play in a row and make sure that it can get all of those pieces of data that make up the colors and the sound. Um, it can have plenty of leeway to um, push out as much of that information as possible. The higher the bitrate, the more of a massive digital highway that this video has to play on, and it can hold even more quality. The target for um, 720 is 5 megabytes per second, and the target for 1080p is 8 megabytes per second. Now, this is fine for YouTube. However, I have run into some problems when uploading my video, and whenever YouTube makes some change to their backend and only announces it after it's happening... You can run into encoding errors and you have to end up re-uploading your video anyway. I do mine at night and that will delay the, um, the release of my videos to the public. And that's just not fun. So what I always do is I always overshoot the recommended um, encoding settings by 2 to 5 megabytes per second. Um, for 1080p, I recommend 12 megabytes per second. And for 720p, I recommend that you hit like 8 to 10. It's just me. Um, it won't increase your file size dramatically, so I just recommend doing it anyway. It'll save you some uh, headaches later down the road. And um, let's just show you, just to be careful with this information, um, if you bump this all the way up, if you look at that number down there, estimated file size, um, if I bump it up to 30, that jumps up to almost like 5 gigs in size. So you want to be careful, because if you have a slower upload speed like I do, you can overshoot and it'll take you forever to upload it. I work from home. I need my upload speed during the day, so that's bad. So around 12 makes a 20-minute-ish video. About 1.8 to 2 gigs. It's pretty good. Not too bad. Um, and then keyframe distance. This is technical. You can use this if you want. Um, if this is on by default, just leave it on by default if you was one of the YouTube presets. But you don't have to worry about that. 
VBR1 pass just exports your video. VBR2 pass is fancy. It exports your video twice and then rolls it into one video file. At first pass, it does. It looks at all of the qualities and the highlights where it's really bright and all of the quality like in areas down here on the ground where it's really dark in the shadows. And it makes sure that you can see everything that's going on in both of those areas. It's the most quality you're going to get. And despite what other people who make similar videos to this might say, the more quality you have before you upload your video, the more quality your video will retain after YouTube compresses the bejesus out of it. So just, I recommend two pass if you've got the time to do it. If it takes you years to encode, just do one. It's not the end of the world if you don't have all that extra quality. So audio, you want the AAC format. That's pretty standard for all MP4 encoding. You can also do Dolby, it can handle that, but just leave it at AAC unless you know what you're doing with that. Um, audio codec again, AAC. AAC version one and two are different. They're for other purposes. Unless you know what those are, I don't recommend it. You want the sample rate to be the highest it can for the most audio quality. And then channel, just leave it at stereo. You don't want mono, mono's boring and flat sounding. Stereo, however, it's got a left and a right channel. It's two channels. And it lets you do like positional audio for certain videos. can be really great. Um, I don't recommend boosting it to 5.1. That's just wasted space in the, uh, in the file that it encodes. You don't need it. No one's going to be listening to your video in the living room. I know I'd love them to, but it's probably not going to happen. Um, audio quality, leave that high. And bit rate, you want it at least at 256 or higher. I always just do the, the default of 320. If you play around with these other settings, you can get it as high as like 512, completely unnecessary. And then just leave these advanced settings alone. They can be whatever they're going to be. Now, Larry, you said I could cheat with those frame rate settings, didn't you? I mean, that's, that's what you were going for, right? Well, you're right. I, I did say you can jump from like 30 to, um, you know, or 29 to 30 or 59 to 60. And to do that, you go down here in these check marks. I'll uncheck them for the moment. Frame blending looks at that one missing frame that takes it up to 60 frames or 30 frames and looks at the one before it and the one after it and says, okay, I'm going to go halfway between these two images and make a new image and it'll smooth out that transition. Works perfectly for upping it just a tad to the next level up. But never go from 30 to 60 and never go from like 24 to 30 because that'll look choppy and bad. You don't want that. It'll make it look like your channel's full of crappy videos. Don't do it. Don't recommend it. Don't, just don't do it. Um, if you're a stickler for quality, check this use for maximum render quality. If you think it'll take too long, leave it unchecked. Really won't increase or decrease the size or quality exp exponentially, but it can help. And then using previews. Previews are what Premiere uses to allow you to see the video you're making as you edit it. It makes them for everything you've ever uploaded or imported into your video editor. It can slightly increase to dramatically increase the rendering time for all of your video. For me, it's like 20 minutes. Um, at most, it, it decreases it. But um, just use it. It's not going to decrease the quality of your videos, and it can make it encode faster, which is always nice. Then hit Q or Export, and you're good to go. All right, everyone. Well, that's my um, guide to all of the recommended settings and how to kind of like get some leeway in there for um, exporting your videos for upload to YouTube. If you enjoyed this video or you found this useful, do me a favor and throw me a like. And of course, if you have any questions, if any of this was confusing to you or you need some clarification or you run a different video editor and need help finding some of these settings because they can be in different places, feel free to leave me a, a comment. I'd love to give you a hand. And of course, if you have a suggestion for another YouTube creator tutorial, this tutorial was created on uh, the reference and uh, recommendation of another user. So throw them out there. I'd love to hear what you're curious about, and I will make you a lovely new voluptuous video. And of course, a link to the reference guide for all of the YouTube settings that are you know recommended for use in various videos. They change periodically. The link to that page is in the, se in the channel description. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo!